Alright guys and girls, this is a long playing review for Monument on the Amstrad CPC, released by Zeppelin Games in 1991. Now up until a few years ago I'd never heard of this game before and it looks like most of the Amstrad community hadn't either. Let's just take a moment though to take in this truly rubbish box art. I mean no wonder no bugger ever bought it. I mean would you if you saw this on a shelf back in the day? Um, I can imagine the discussion between the managers at Zeppelin and the guy who designs their covers. Here yeah, mate, the game's called Monument. Um, no idea what the game's about, just find a stock photo of some old looking building that's not going to cost us out and slap it on the cover. That'll do, why a? And uh, this is what we got. Anyway, no wonder Zeppelin weren't that successful and well, they did come quite late into the budget market. But yes, it hardly screams run and gun game, does it? Because that's exactly what this is. And I love run and gun games. If I'd known about it back in the day, this would have been an instant purchase being on budget with my pocket money. Uh, okay, here we are. The game's booted up and we're on the title screen, which we get our high scores. And when you start the game, you actually start <laughs> on the uh, high score screen, which is kind of unusual. You can even die on that screen and get a game over, which would be a first in gaming history dying on the high score table, perhaps. Anywho, off we go. And as you can see, it's a nice run and gun action on a single screen. But look how nicely it moves. And look at those lovely background graphics, like the uh, sun and the sunset there. It looks really, really gorgeous. And that's what caught my eye. Because when I came across this, uh, it was quite randomly. I saw a screenshot of it somewhere on some Amstrad site about, oh, I don't know, about seven years ago or something like that. And I was like, oh, that looks interesting. And uh, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad I came across it. Oh, the first power up there, we've got rapid fire. You, you will keep that uh, power up throughout the game as long as you don't die or if you pick up another power up so it's you got R for rapid fire which we just picked up if you see a pickup with T on it that's for triple shot and also pretty good actually we might use that later on G for guardian and um, we'll talk about that later it's like um I think that bu uh, a circular thing that buzzes around you and homes in on enemies oh look there's an animated bird in the background there yeah, it, you can't shoot it and it can't hurt you. Anyway, uh, and there's also I for invincibility, but you lose your current weapon power up. Um, so we got the sort of turrets as well. Well, these are like um, stationary robots. You just have to shoot it in the head. Looks a bit like an ED-209. Um, those are radiation hotspots. I'm just ju jumping over there. And those are mines coming out the ground there. But yeah, I came across this randomly on an Amstrad site a few years ago. And um, and it, it came to my mind again recently because um, Yellow Belly, uh, a great YouTuber, um, does lots of Amstrad stuff. Um, he... Um, covered this game in his Hidden Gems series looking for those um, forgotten about or, and very little known about Amstrad games that are really really good and uh, this was one of his picks and I absolutely love this it just I thought like well it's about time we uh, look to do a long play video of this another rapid fire pick up there so it's all about getting across the screen as carefully as possible um, enemies do stop spawning when you're a certain distance from the edge of the screen like there. Um, which is always the problem with single screen games that enemies spawning on top of you can always be a problem. Thankfully they don't spawn right on top of you on the next screen. Um, you can't go back a screen by the way. Um, but I think there's enough distance uh, from your character to the far right of the screen to, for enemies to stop spawning in. I think they've got that just right. And if you're desperate, you can just do a big long jump and hopefully hit the edge of the screen and move on to the next uh, section. So there's 54 screens in total. And you can see the screen number we're currently on in the very bottom left corner. We're on screen 16, moving to 17 now. We've got the score next to next to that. 
882 points there. Uh, the number of lives, we've got eight lives, so plenty of lives. This is a deceptively difficult game. I'm gonna make this look easy because uh, we're doing a long play. So ideally, we, we wanna try and get through this without losing a life. Um, and then to the right there, you've got the current weapon you pick, uh, got activated. So we just picked up the T icon there, and we've got the triple shot. And I think uh, we're going to keep this throughout the rest of the game. I like the amount of firepower you can shoot out. Lots of bullets very quickly, and it just feels really good. Um, I don't like run and gun games or shoot 'em up games where you can only fire a bullet at a time or it's very weedy. You really do spray the screen with bullets and it just it just feels much more cooler and fun to be able to do that. So uh, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot, especially when you've got the rapid fire or the triple shot. Your normal weapon fires out a decent amount of bullets, um, just enough to kill one of these uh, en uh, these robot enemies coming constantly at you um, in about three shots, which is just about enough there. Ah, there's G for Guardian. So we're not gonna pick this up because we're gonna try, we wanna get through the game as best as possible. The Guardian <clears throat> is like kind of like a circular thing that buzzes around you, but it's like a homing missile, except it's not always that particularly well behaved and useful and helpful. So I tend not to pick it up. Uh, you'll only see that pick up maybe twice in the game anyway. Um, stick with the rapid fire or the triple shot. The triple shot's really handy. Look at that. I was able to take out that like turret a great distance without doing too much. Oh yes, if you hold down the fire button and push up, then you can shoot directly up as well. That's going to be very useful. Um, so yeah, um, let's talk about the story of the games, give you a bit of a background. I mean, it's a bit ridiculous, the story. Um, we'll start with the, the story on the back of the box. And it says, the attack on the colony by mechanized combat units was as savage and end as any in recorded history. However, a group of survivors withdrawing to the safety of a mineral ore mine decide to strike back. Armed with superconductor weapons, they prepare for a last-ditch attempt uh, to repel the alien force and reach Monument. We don't actually know what Monument is. Hmm. I think it's just like the end building, basically. Um, there's also on the inside cover, there's a little bit more story, and it reads as thusly. The grey morning light filters through the dense cloud of smoke and ash. Only the thin screech of carrion birds, oh, we actually see them in the game, uh, can be heard in the air above the desolate ruins of the once busy spaceport. Like sine waves plotted on cosmic graph paper, civilizations rise and ultimately fall. The monument stands dark and desolate in the cold morning air. For the occupants of the colony willing to fight to the last, it is their only hope. So, what is the monument? What secrets does it have? Will it, will it be revealed at the end of the game? Well, stay tuned, dear viewer. <laughs> but yeah, what a load of old guff. Um, yeah, just run left to right, blasting everything. 54 screens, job done. Oh, there's the uh, eye for invincibility pickup there. We shan't, we, we shan't bother. Mm. Actually, in some situations, I do pick it up, actually. Not this time. But we will pick up an invincibility one later in the game because there's actually some several tough screens after it and, and then there's another triple shot weapon to pick up shortly after if you're really really quick and uh, that will save you quite a lot of time and a lot of lives uh we got a bonus live we're now on nine lives uh i forgot to make a note of what score you're on to get that probably 2000 points at a guess but i completely missed um making a note of that anyway um, on to Zeppelin themselves. Let's talk about Zeppelin, the company here. I haven't really talked about them before. Now, Zeppelin, the budget label, had an interesting history and, as far as I can tell, are still going um, today. Founded in uh, 1987 by a 17-year-old, Brian Joblin, after he'd done well selling his own games he'd made to other publishers. And so he decided to start his own. Kind of a bit of a David and Richard Darling and Codemasters situation, really. Um, and uh, Zeppelin, well, they seemed to do okay. They weren't particularly as well regarded as like Codemasters or anything like that. Uh, but they well, they did well enough to start up different labels. For example, the Impulse 
label to start selling full price games, most notably Ed the Duck on the Amstrad. God, I hate these um, bouncing rocks or whatever the frick they are. They seem to sort of home in on you and they're the, they're the things that often cost me lives and uh, cause me a lot of trouble and difficulty. There's often like ledges you, you perhaps don't think you can jump on and stand on, but they're there. Like these window sills there, you can actually jump and land on. But not the ones above though. <laughs> you fall through them. I for invincibility, let's pick that up. There you go. And run, 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 run. Because you've only got a limited time. You've lost your weapon. I think on the next screen, there's a triple shot again to pick up. So that's saved us a lot of time. And we've got our weapon back. Um, uh, so in, uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, Zeppelin again. So in 1980, sorry, 1994, they became Merit Studios. Then finally, Eutechnics in 1996, specializing in racing games predominantly for the PlayStation. I don't think they had massive, massive success, but did well enough to keep going. They're still going in 2020. Um, and they didn't get many plaudits um, with, with any one particular game. Um, I mean, it looks like they had decent success with the run of official NASCAR games. But they're most notable for the weekly received uh, 007 Racing, having a bit of a James Bond license there. And especially for the notoriously bad Ride to Hell Retribution, which has often been the butt of the joke for many a game reviewer, often featuring worse games lists quite recently. I think even Angry Video Game Nerd did a video on that. But well, as far as I can tell, they're still going today, even if it seems like they haven't made a game since 2015. It looks like they focus their business into technology for car showrooms and car manufacturers, using the engine they made for all the many, many racing games they produce over their lifespan. As for Brian Joblin, the 17-year-old that started this company up, well, he, res he finally resigned from the company on the 15th of July 2020, so not too long ago, and now lives in a very nice house, whilst his brother Darren now runs the show for him. I think uh, probably retired, and deservedly so now. So as for the coder of this game, uh, whilst we just slowly take out the turrets here, being careful. The coder was a guy called Richard Cook. Um, I don't know much about him, sadly. Um, his only other games for the Amstrad were for the player's budget label, both in 1989 with a game called Shark and another game called Task Force. I, I think I've only played them briefly before. I don't remember them being anything particularly outstandingly special. Certainly, I think this is, is it, this is his finest work in the trilogy of games he made for the Amstrad. But guys, uh, we often like to look at what um, the other conversions uh, were like to the other systems, but there's no other versions of Monument on any of the systems. So this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is an Amstrad exclusive, hurrah! It's nice to have one for once. And, and it's a bloody good game. Um, I did go looking, as always, for a review in the Amstrad Action magazine of the day, um, like I always do, to see what the review was said at the time. Um, sadly, I couldn't find a review for this, and I uh, did look through all the issues of Amstrad Action in 1991 and a couple in 92, but sadly, no review. Amstrad Action didn't tend to review a lot of budget games, sadly. Not until like early 1992 onwards when the full price software started to really dry up. So, um, as we get close to the end of the game, what do I think then? Well, this is a no frills run and gun game, but what it does, it does really, really well. Um, so the focus hasn't been on presentation, music and other stuff to make it seem better than it actually is. Instead, the focus has been on game pa gameplay, getting fast moving uh, and smooth moving responsive shooting action and sprites and that's why we like it a lot of people who have played this really really like this game um 
the mode the, the mode one graphics are really nice and this is coming from a mode naught fanboy and generally i don't like mode one for color graphics i like my big chunky pixels in 16 colors but this has been done exceptionally well nicely detailed sprites and some lovely backgrounds uh, in four colors um so that goes a long way um, towards liking the game so much. And uh, it's just a quick, decent, blasting run and gun action. And, um, you know, it's just almost as good as um, Grizor in terms of gameplay. Would have been nice to have a bit of variety to the weapons and maybe some enemies, some bosses to fight. And yeah, it would have been nice to have some better presentation. But this is a basically a $2.99 budget game. Or was it $3.99 at the time? One of the two. Um, so yeah, I really like it. The only thing is, it, it can be frustratingly difficult, and having those bol flying boulders are really flipping frustrating, and uh, it just uh, raise the annoyance level a lot. But you do get quite a lot of lives, and we've got 12 lives as we reach the end of the game. Well done, you have reached the main entrance to the monument, and then game over. So there you go, and then in a high score table. So there you are. I, I like that a lot. Um, you do get plenty of lives, and you can get bonus lives. We've got up to 12 bonus lives there. We started on seven or eight lives. Starting with that high number of lives shows how difficult the programmer acknowledges the game is. Um, with a bit of practice, you should be able to get through it. So as for my score, well, taking into account it's a budget game, I'm going to give this an eight and a half out of ten yes i liked it that much but it depends if you're a run and gun fan but i think this is really well done and yes you can die on the high score table all right guys thanks for watching take care and goodbye so thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed that if you did please click a like below leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already and over that way there's another video for you to check out zypho out